city's heart is with you. To the Abernathy family, to the pastors and members of this church, what I stand here definitely knowing for sure is that Juanita Jones Abernathy changed the world. What I definitely know for sure is that from day one of the civil rights movement in America, she weaved the blanket of freedom that we enjoy every single night. What I definitely know is that no person of color in any position of significance in the United States of America enjoys that position without Juanita Abinadi. And what I know is that all of that is glorious and powerful and wonderful, but that's not what we're here to celebrate today. I came by because the first time I met Mrs. Abernathy, Yvonne Yancey took me by the house because I, I thought I could be there for Atlanta. And anybody who wanted to be in politics, that was a visit that you needed to go make. You needed to go sit on that couch. <laughs> so I approached the house. I saw Kwame. He let me in the door. I sat on that couch. I waited a while. I, I asked Yvonne if I was on time for my appointment. We waited a little longer. I didn't really know what was going on, but boy, I waited. When Mrs. Abernathy was ready, she came out and we started to talk and it was kind of chilly, Mayor Bottoms. And then by about six o'clock, it got a little warmer, Mayor Campbell. And then about eight, I was feeling pretty good. I got some Kool-Aid, so I felt like it's, I'm coming up. We sat at the house that night and talked for goodness. I don't know how long, I don't even remember anymore. But what I remember was that that night was one of the best nights of my entire life. She talked about the civil rights movement in the United States of America, the city of Atlanta, and took me on a journey through history that I will remember for the rest of my life. When I was sitting at the counter, Yvonne, she said, you know, I used to feed Dr. King fish there. And I felt so humble just to be standing in her midst. As I put on my coat, she grabbed my hand and she said, boy, I think I'm going to be with you. And she said, but you know all that, that stuff you were talking about, statistics and all of that, that's not really how you're going to win. You're going to win through these Beauty parlors and barbershops. And I love the way she said beauty parlors, beauty parlors. And so what would happen is, from then on, when she would be in the beauty parlor and she would hear how things were going, she would give me a phone call. And that phone call was always urgent. This is what I heard in the beauty parlor today. She said, boy, did you go into a beauty parlor with a suit on today at the top? She said, when you go in a beauty parlor, I want you to have your shirt sleeves rolled up. I want you to be looking good. And she gave me advice and time and time again. And then as, as I turned to leave, I looked at her in the eye. And the most powerful memory I had was how much she loved her husband, Ralph. And I remember thinking as I left about what measure of woman that generation had created and how they stood by that man and built that man and made so much of our reality possible today. And so I came this way to celebrate and smile, Kwame, because I know that she's celebrating right now because she's got a date with the love of her life. And while we're here today to talk about civil rights, I'm here today to talk about a great American love story that occurred between Ralph David Abernathy and Juanita Abernathy. And I'm here today to think what it must be like in this world to have somebody who loves you so much that years after you've gone, when they finally get to heaven, they're going to be smiling, dancing hand in hand, 
I know she's going to have an appointment at the beauty parlor. And I know she's going to look into Ralph's eyes. And he's going to look into hers. And they're going to embrace. And they're going to say, let's do it all over again. God bless you.